In this lecture, let's go ahead and learn how we could create a to-do list and nest these to-do items inside a to-do list. So as I earlier mentioned, to-do list is going to be a component and this to-do item is going to be nested within that component. So let's go ahead and create a to-do list component. So inside the components, I'll create a new file called as to-do list.js. And as this is going to be a component, I would say const to-do list this is going to be equal to and let's create an arrow function and this is going to return a div so i'll create a div here and for now let's just say this is to do list and once we have this let's export it so export default that's going to be to do list okay so once that thing is done uh, let's make use of that to do list inside our app so right now, as I earlier mentioned, this to do which we have displayed up over here was only to view the output and see how that element looks like. But in reality, we are actually be going to be nesting that particular to do item inside the to do list. So we are going to be using to do item here and not here. So let's change this thing to to do list. And let's also make sure that we import to do list from component forward slash to do list. So once that thing is done, that to-do list should be added up over here. But now we don't want that to-do list to be a simple text here. Instead, what we wish to do is that we wish to go ahead and take the to-do items which are actually present up over here inside app.js. So these are the to-do items saved inside the to-do list. And we essentially want to render all of those items inside the to-do list. So the question becomes how exactly to do that. So doing that is quite simple. We have some data inside this app component and we want to pass it to the nested component or the child component, which is to do list. So in order to pass that, what we essentially do is that we make use of props. So if we go inside app.js, we simply have to go ahead and pass in the to do list here as props. So here I would say to do list is going to be equal to nothing but to do list. So just as we have passed in to do list to the form in a similar fashion, we have passed it up over here as well. And once we have access to that to do list, I could simply go ahead and display that to do list up over here. So let's try different ways of displaying that list over here. So if I go to to do list, I could simply go ahead and let's try to print out to do list and see what do we get here. So if I would say to do list, let's see what do we get. So if I do that, go back here, as you can see, it says to do list is not defined because we need to accept that to do list as props. So here I could say props and here I could say props dot to do list. So if I do that, so this should be props. So if I do that, go back here, as you can see, that to do list is now being displayed here. And one more thing which you could do is that you could destructure the props right up over here so you don't have to say props dot to do list here so instead of props i would say to do list and that means i simply have to say to do list here and those items would be returned up over here which is all fine and good the problem though is that now we don't want to display these to do lists here because we already have created a component which is called as the to do component so now we want to render this particular to do list and we want to take each item from the to-do list and sort of put it inside this to-do component so that it would be displayed in a stylish manner. So the question is how to do that. So first of all, in order to get access to each individual element inside this to-do list, we actually have to go ahead and map through each and every item. And that's exactly what we will be doing here. So here I would say to-do list dot map and use a callback here and inside the callback we will get access to each to do item so once we have access to that particular item we simply have to go ahead and use parentheses here and now here instead of just displaying those elements now i have to use the to do component so here i would say to do and once we have this to do component inside this particular to do component i have to pass in the to do item which we have up over here so I'll simply go ahead and pass in to do item. So I would say to do item equals to do item. So now what's happening is that if I go back here, 
let's say ST do is not defined because we also need to import this. So I would say import to do from to do. So if I do that, as you can see, now the to do items are rendered here. However, if you take a look at the component, you will see that all of them are named to do item and they don't have the actual names like homework, lunch and dinner. And that's because we have actually passed in the to do item here to this to do component. But now we need to actually make use of that. So as this data which we have passed up over here are props, we need to receive those props here. So in order to receive those props here, I'll go ahead and I can see something like props. But again, as I said, it's always better if you destructure those props. So in order to destructure those props, I would go ahead and say uh, to do item. So now that's being passed here that's being captured here. And once we have this to do item here, I could actually make use of that to do item or display that to do item here. So in brackets, I would say to do item. If I save that go back here, as you can see, now we have those to do items displayed up over here, which is pretty cool in my opinion. However, if you take a look at the right hand side, it says warning each child in list should have a unique key prop. And that's because whenever you are rendering some elements inside a list or inside something using map, what you need to do is that you need to assign a unique key to all of those items. So for example, if I now go to to do list, if we take a look at this, as we are looping through each and every element using map, this to do which we got here must have a unique ID. Now the question is how exactly would you get a unique ID for every to do element which you have up over here. And another question is why exactly would you need that unique ID. So the reason why we need an unique ID is first of all obviously to get rid of this warning. But even if you don't bother about this warning, what happens is that in order to make this done button functional or this delete button functional you would need to get access to the ID of the to do item. So for example, if I want to delete this lunch from here or get it done, if I click on done, this item needs to be deleted. And if we want this item to be deleted, we would need access to the unique ID of that particular item. So that becomes a problem. And we are going to learn how to solve that problem in the next lecture. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.